turn it up some more, folks. But we are playing Iron Sworn, and today, our first player to start to kick off the campaign, you may know them as Asian Warp from our podcast, Doomed to Repeat. Uh, they do all of the incredible artwork for us. It is none other than the incomparable... Companion? All right, let me try to do this. Actually, Zakia, you have roll 20 up, right? Okay, I'm going to walk you through this. Hit select and choose companion. Because for some reason, I'm having a hard time on my end. On assets and choose companion. You can justify that you are resupplying by hunting for small game or you're undertaking a journey and, and following game or something like that you can add plus one. So if you want to check that box, you can. And the only other thing worth knowing is that at the bottom, there's that series of numbers, zero to three. And what that means is, is this represents your, your companion's health. So it'll start at three. And anytime you ever have any, uh, any damage or any harm that is done to your companion, hopefully never, it will reduce. And if it gets to zero, there's a possibility it'll die. But it's kind of hard. So, you know, I, I think your companion will be just fine. Just don't throw it into combat too much. Okay. Sure. But there is a, an ability that if you if you um, upgrade this asset using the experience you gain with your vows, you can gain something where I think you can secure an advantage plus one uh, using the hawk. So it can be used in combat. All right. Okay. So we've added our first asset. It's time to pick another one. Why don't you hit add in the bottom left there of the character sheet. Oh, uh, cool. Also, it looks like uh, our audio may have dropped out again. Okay. I'm taking a look. Check one, two. Check one, two. I see you. And give me a check, Zakia. Yeah, check one, two. All right. You are there. Uh, I do see Zakia's levels when she speaks. Uh, it's properties. It says we have a little bit of a lag. I see. But so your audio is coming in. Okay, my audio is coming in. I think yours is too, but it's had a little bit of a lag. Uh, are are, are you plugged in or are you wireless right now? Uh, internet is wireless. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. How do we simplify this? Because. I wonder if you can close. I don't want you to close roll 20. I don't want you to close zoom. There's nothing else open, right? No. I mean, I could just try like replugging my mic in real quick. I don't, I, I don't think you're, I don't think that would be the issue. It's a matter of just getting the right uh, amount of kilobits and nonsense from you. Everything on my end is very stable. So it's a shame, okay. but I think we're just going to have to kind of continue for now and hope that it, it gets a little bit better soon. I'll keep an eye on it. So let's move on. We need to add two more assets, and these are going to be at random. So we're going to hit add. Okay. And then you're going to decide, you're going to tell me whether you want, uh, what asset you want next. I think there's um, combat ritual. Oh. Sorry, no. They, I was looking at the... You're fine. So there is um, a ritual, which are, is like magic. There's a combat uh, uh, style or path. And then there's actual path. And then there's another companion. Maybe you just want to have nothing but animal companions with you. Ooh, ooh. Okay. This is a long list of things. <laughs> um... Now, here's the thing. That long list of things is random. I just want you to choose... Do you want a combat talent? Because that will be random. What combat talent you gain will be random. Okay, yeah. I think we'll do combat talent Okay, then. so in roll 20, let me switch over so that we can see this. I want to see just the rolls. Go ahead and roll a d20 and let's see what you get. We're going to ignore anything above 14. Okay, so we are picking assets right now. You guys haven't missed much. I'm just rolling for combat talent, and we're rolling a d20 flat, you said? You're rolling a flat d20, and we're ignoring anything above 14. Cute. Okay. 
that do a thing? Should have. He did. I rolled exactly a 14. Interesting. Let me make sure that you can see it. Oh, it's at the top, of course. I set it so that everyone could see it at the bottom, and that's not how roll 20 wants to work. So we're going to come in here, just rolls. Uh-huh. Huh, you should see it. Interact. That's what this is. Also, thank you everyone in the chat for keeping us updated. Yeah. Um, we Let's are oh, I know why. almost there then. I got it. I solved it. Here we go. I'm solving it right now. If I can just get it to play nice with me. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right, first roll of the game, 14. There it is. So cool. beautiful. Good. Just rolling along. So now, under combat talent, go to the very last option because that's number 14, and that is the combat talent you have gained. All right. Thunder Oh, Rider. snap. That's good. I don't... Okay. So I wield a mighty hammer. Okay. I love that. When you face danger, secure an advantage, or compel someone... By hitting or breaking an inanimate object, add plus Powerful. one and take plus one momentum on a hit. So when you do any of those things, you can get a plus one if you just do the flavor of you smash it against an inanimate object. Okay. That's amazing. Scared. Might it's passionate already. It might terrify your hawk, uh, but still cool. Yeah, they don't like that but okay maybe they're just yeah. always in the air like kind of away from you because they know you're going to bring the hammer at some point okay this is our relationship <laughs> time for our last asset go ahead and hit add again okay and you just tell now, me what uh what asset you want ritual feels weird okay you um, want to do a little magic also but i, I want to find before we do magic i want to find out where i am we don't have time for like a gap year in this place. So I wanna I wanna do path first. I see. Now here's the thing. You can only have three assets. So if you choose path, then it's that's it. That's the three of them that you've chosen. But paths are good too. They give you abilities and a whole bunch of stuff. So if you want a path, you can choose one. And if you want a ritual at a later point, maybe your character gains enough experience that they gain some kind of magical ability. Yes. All right. Yes. I will save the ritual for someone else. Gotcha. But uh yeah. Okay. So so what do if I you roll? want to choose a path, you may either roll 1d20 or 2d20. We're going to ignore anything above a 34. Okay. 1d20. Let's do 2d20. Ignore everything. Above a 34. Above a okay. 34. Okay, I rolled 20. All right. Go down 28. I don't... Uh, okay. It's going to take a little time, but... <laughs> I got you. I got you. Nine, twelve, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven. Mm. Trickster, then. Okay. Trickster is that the one? Um. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Let's read this one also, through. We're getting some word that uh, we can't see roll twenty or the people. The people meaning us. We got you. First roll. First roll. Single. No, they can see us. They can't see. Yeah, they can't see roll twenty. I do see that. Okay, so that makes no sense because let's transition here. Okay, but just so we're clear, so far I have a hawk best friend um, that is unnamed. I am a thunderbringer, which pretty much just seems like my hammer is where my confidence is coming from, which is fine. And I am a trickster, which means uh, when I face danger, secure an advantage, or compel by lying, bluffing, stealing, or cheating, I can add a plus one. Which is really good for the people that are going to play this game. An amazing character so far, I, I have to agree. Oh yeah, okay, so yeah, it's plus one for lying, bluffing, stealing, or cheating when I face danger, secure an advantage, or compel. This is the kid who absolutely, like, whatever the iron sworn equivalent of, like, should be playing football but chooses not to, that is them. They are, like, physically intimidating they are a large child but um they just refuse like they find a lot more comfort amongst the birds with their friend uh now maybe not charles but 
Yeah. Yeah, they're an absolute unit, but they are they can't fly, unfortunately. So okay, so we're looking at the skills and I can't remember, sorry, do I get one? How do I how do I divide the skills again? Well, so we just um we just went through what each skill represents, fam. We'll get you back in a second. We were just talking about the five ability, the five um uh, what are these attributes? Edge, heart, iron, yes. shadow, and wits. We are going to put a three into one of these. We're going to put two okay. twos into two of these and two ones into two of these. So with okay. the knowledge of the assets that you have, what do you think are the appropriate um, things to go into? So for instance, you are a trickster and I believe having good shadow because shadow involves deceptiveness and sneaking around and that kind of thing, it would be advantageous to have a decent shadow. Um, however, you also are a, a little aggressive uh, with your hammer. And see, when you face danger, secure an advantage or compel, um, you know, you, you, you could put it, something in iron and that might uh, be good, but, but, uh, wits or heart might also be good for when you try to compel folks. Oh. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, am I still out? Uh, let's see. He looks very evocative. This is still out. And I think it might be... Oh. Oh, hey. Hello. Oh, man. It seems like we're just like super lag behind, which is such a shame. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, well, you're back. I'm back. Yeah, so I'm explaining to them what's happening. For whatever reason, we're just super lagged. But let's just continue on. Okay. So I think um, Shadow would be good to have three in. Okay. For everyone's sake, um, I don't think our our lad is super smart. Maybe one for wits. Okay. I want him to have a lot of heart, a lot of hustle out there on the yeah. field. Um. Hmm. Okay. Edge is like combat centered, and iron. One Ed, more time. Ed, is... Edge is like the dex. Iron is like the strength. Oh, oh but he's he's a he's a strong boy. Lad, yeah. They, they have the they have the uh, big hammer, so maybe iron is appropriate. Yeah, but he's chasing hawks all the time. <laughs> um, I don't know. Let's see. You're chasing hawks, okay. but yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Do you want to be able to kind of nimbly move around and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I kind of... Mm -hmm. like, we'll, we'll... He'll... He'll earn his his hawk chasing. I think we'll give him a lot of iron. I think he was born with this. Yeah. Okay, good. And we're both good. awesome. So we've chosen our five stats. Um, yes. Everything when you begin health, spirit, and supply. These are always at plus five, and they represent uh, supply. For instance, stuff that you have on you. Uh, your spirit is kind of your endurance and your ability to keep going, and obviously health is your health. So they all start at five. Your momentum starts at two. We've talked a little bit about what momentum is. Uh, if you have any questions about it, don't feel free to ask. But it's basically a way to cancel a challenge die if things go wrong and you will gain momentum as we start making moves. So next, we need to choose some background bonds. These are bonds that you have that are important to you. People, I think that I would allow a bond to be the the entire tribe uh but we need at least three mm -hmm. and i'd like kind of a you know, a little bit of a summary as to who these people are okay um i think we have a bond b hmm. Hmm. i feel like because hawks or birds like this are so yeah. important to forecasters maybe there's like one buddy, like one forecaster that they know uh, that they're super connected to, but also they're kind of a scrub. 
So it would also probably be maybe the youngest or the newest forecaster. Okay. Um, and they just sort of, that's my best friend, each other. So they, they've kind of come up um, together, maybe, you know, they're both maybe the same age or something. Yes. However old this yes, person is. Yes. Yes. However old um, they end up being. Whatever. It, yeah. But they're, yeah, I think they're the same age. I think um, maybe it was like super important that this person like got them their first hawk. And it was maybe like a parting gift. I don't know. Maybe they're just, yeah, they're just good, distant friends. Okay. I, I, I like where this is going. I, I even like the idea of maybe them having a little bit of a rivalry or something. Maybe we can play with that. But let's Ooh, let's yes. first roll to find out their name. Go ahead using uh, roll 20. Let me make it so that we can see the rolls. Go ahead and roll a d100. Ooh. We'll pick an Ironlander name. Okay. D100 is a number. Oh, it's 17. Okay. All right. So let's see. I want my, my nemesis enemies to lovers name. Your. Um, That's not canon yet. Right. Guys. Your Gary Oak to your Ash Ketchum. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Is it bad that I have also haven't seen Pokemon? Oh my gosh. All right, we won't say anything about that. Let's move on. Okay. So you rolled a 17 okay. on the Ironlander name sheet. Wulan. W-U-L-A-N. Wulan is the name of this, this forecaster. And I'm also going to mess with our progress. I've got like a little uh, uh, sheet here. That your bond, or one of your bonds, is called Wulon the Forecaster. Same age, maybe a rivalry. Okay, so that's one bond. Let's, um, if you wouldn't mind in roll 20, if you wouldn't mind adding uh, that person's name. And I think if you click details, it probably allows you to add some detail. Oh. Um, Did it go away? Yeah. Mm. No, you're fine. I think I'm just like, yes, okay. So, Wulon. Oh, yeah, if you save it, it'll well, probably... Know about them. There you go. Great, great. Forecaster. Or probably rivals. Maybe frenemies. <laughs> frenemies, spell, yeah. Huh? Okay, good. Okay. So we have one bond. Let's come up with another one. Can you think of another, you know, uh, logical bond that your character might have? Ooh. Okay, so we have connections to the outside. We need connections on the inside hmm. of the tribe somewhere. It might be worth um, deciding whether your character is a part of the Ironmongers, the, the historians... Oh. Yes, or the uh, or the cartographers. Right. Um, let's. I don't think they care much for the for the behavior of spirits and gods. So maybe not the cartographers. Okay. Um, but ooh, I think historians. I think they're super into like what like how they can be a better hawk person, falconer. Sorry, and how like people who've done it in the past, how they can excel at it. They're a huge nerd right. about that. I think. Okay, we'll cool. Do so add a new bond, and let's see. Let's. Um, I think it might be worth having a particular person amongst the historians that you uh, feel closest to, right? So give me another yes. D hundred roll, and let's find their name. And then I think we should also decide their their disposition. We'll figure that out after. Okay, I like the idea of having like a like a. Um, a comforting English professor that I kiki with. If, okay, so this is uh, the role is thirty eight. Awesome. So with thirty eight, their name is. Uh, oh, I saw the wrong thing here. Uh, Mona. 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 And once you've added them, M O N A. Mona. Okay. Cool. And then once you add Cute. them, give me another. Uh, D hundred roll to determine their disposition. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. 
That's 13. 13. They are friendly. So feel free to describe yeah. them as friendly. It's nice to have a friend. Yeah, I think they're they're the confidant that they go to maybe when like people are on them too much or like maybe if they if they do the thing with the hammer, they just kind of get a little aggro. <laughs> I think they go visit Mona. <laughs> <laughs> she like brings them down with their theory. And While we're at it, let's also um, add the the descriptor for our friend Wulan. Why don't you roll another D100? Let's determine what they're like. Oh, cool. You could yeah. either choose disposition or a descriptor of them. Um, flesh out a character's personality or uh, define the initial tone. Uh, let, let's go with descriptor. Let's go with descriptor because it's kind of the overall yeah. personality. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's a 47. Let's see. 47. So close to where I don't have to move this. All right, 47 remorseful they are remorseful that's very interesting something went bad now okay. now remorseful uh, means mm -hmm. regretful right so what are they remorseful of that that they still have a beef with you okay okay well hmm i mean i don't feel like this person is like living it up on top i i think like it has to be one of the few things that this character has that they wanted or maybe that they like broke the rules. Maybe they shouldn't have been a forecaster. Um, maybe we just had a really good thing going and they messed oh, up. Oh, so they're somehow. remorseful of becoming a forecaster. That could work. At the same time, based on our last conversation about forecasters, life is hard. Yeah. Like they might all low key be remorseful about that. But yeah, I, I think maybe how they got there mm, is maybe not all above the table. They're remorseful, maybe because they maybe they took your place or something. Maybe. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Yeah, I like that. Okay, because we haven't established anything about what forecasters look like. I just assume they look like track stars, <laughs> but um, I okay. like that. I like that they took. So definitely yeah. right. Location wise, I guess you should write that they are. Let's see, if they're the newest, if they're new forecasters, I feel like they'd be more towards the anvil, right? They'd be more towards, or is it safer in the yes. front? I guess it, I guess it always changes. It always kind of changes depending on what direction it's moving. Let's just say that, let, let's just say that they're found at the, at the wall, right? At the storm wall. And okay. let's change their descriptor. I guess you could include new forecaster, but also add remorseful. Remorseful. Exactly. Something something small like that. Like they took my juice box. That's yes. But maybe it was an ultimate juice box. I'm sorry. Okay, so they're at the storm wall. New forecaster is remorseful. Um, and then we have Mona, who's historian and friendly. We have one more, yeah? Yes, we need one more bond. Maybe somebody that's just in your family. Maybe it's um, a relative. I know that's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but maybe... <laughs> um, I like the idea of like uh, like a matriarch okay. of their family okay, or something. Cool. Like a grandma. a grandma. Grandma makes sense. That's grandma excited. makes a lot of sense. Uh, why don't you add that to the character sheet? And once you've added it, roll the D hundred. Let's determine their name. You like grandma? What do I call you? With a forty. Forty. With a forty, their name is. Avella, A V E L L A, Avella. That's a good. Oh, that's a good grandma name. Work well. Hello, Avella. <laughs> cool. I hope I saw All right, right, now let's let's um, roll another D hundred. Let's determine their descriptor. This is a 
good support system. Mm-hmm. I'm glad mm-hmm. they have that. With a, with a 90, she is fervent. F-E-R-V-E-N-T. She is fervent. What is she fervent about? Ooh, I think, um, let's see. I think maybe she's really, maybe she's not as, hmm, I want her to be an iron monger. That's one thing. Interesting. Fervent about, like, oh man, what is she? I mean, she could about? be fervent about Maybe. being an ironmonger. About uh, you know, uh, she's fervent about you being in the wrong position. You're doing the wrong thing. Oh, ooh, yes, but she doesn't. Maybe okay. So I think she's on my case about being in the wrong place. And maybe she's like picking at the truth. Maybe she doesn't know what happened between me and Mulan, but um, she's like, something's wrong. Something's wrong there. You shouldn't be here. Maybe she's a little spooky, and that's going to be a source. Okay, of cool. Make sure to write her location. I assume we should put uh, uh, in the center of the village, or you know, in 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 your home. Yeah. And yeah. Now, did did you say that she she you're you're going with the idea that she wants you to be something else. Okay. Yes. She doesn't have to be abusive about it, but she's pretty fervent about no. it. No. Yeah, no, she's not a jerk, but she's she's the kind of person that just acts like, "What are you doing nowadays?" even though <laughs> she like they've been doing the same thing every day since <laughs> they've been at days. So, yeah. So she wants them um just do something else with their life. Okay, cool. Chill about it, though. Is chill about it. That's not how spell, though. Cool. Okay, great. So, we have chosen our three bonds. There should be three little uh, check marks. On, uh, if you see your bond progress bar, uh, make sure that there are three of those little check marks. And that oh, that is going okay. to... Uh, reflect kind of when the character is ready to retire, however many bonds you've you've earned will uh, you, you're gonna roll against that and that will determine kind of the outcome of your character, you know how they retire, etc. So this is kind of its own uh, 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 experience kind of tr- progress track. Okay, cool. So we've gotten the b- the bonds out of the way. Time to choose the vows, the iron vows. Now there needs to be a long term vow that if you go to summary, you'll see that the 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 difficulty of these vows are kind of uh, labeled from troublesome all the way to epic. Uh, we need a long term vow that is on the extreme or epic side. And then we need a more short term vow that is closer to like troublesome, dangerous, maybe even formidable, something that will take a little bit of time, but can be solved sooner than later. Okay. I think they they want one of their hawks. Like I, th- I think they want one of their hawks to be able to be like the one that sounds the alarm for like an amazing haul for the tribe. Like if one of their hawks gives word about an obelisk or something, I'm just thinking ways that they could make their grandma proud quickly and what she cares about. Oh, which is iron. I see. And yeah, I want. I want that. That's not like a super lofty goal, no. but they're trying to be the, yeah. So okay. it's kind of like you, you want to prove yourself. You want to prove that you're in the right position, right? You're, you're doing the, the, the right thing. Yes. You want, right. And, and, and it needs to be something relatively achievable. So it's like, it's like a rite of passage. It's like a, it's like a, a more short term goal. So maybe we can frame the vow like you want to, See, just saying you want to impress your grandma is not a... It's a little too nebulous. Something yeah. a little more concrete, like, I want to uh, 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 succeed on my rite of passage. I want to... Maybe we decide that you want to catch something or you want to uh, prove useful with your hawk. Yes. Yeah, I think they want to prove prove useful with their hawk, but specifically in... I don't know. Finding oh, an obelisk okay. Gotcha. Like gotcha. So in your, but yeah, uh, yeah, finding an obelisk is a challenge, but maybe it can be finding something that will benefit the tribe. Yes. 
finding a finding a hole is yeah. So prove themselves by finding a hole. A hole. Does that sound a good? hole. H a u l. You're saying right? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so we have our vow. Go ahead and write that down. Uh, this is let's see. It's not. It's not impossible to come across these things, I think, as, as we have decided in our lore. Coming across them can prove to be dangerous. I think formidable implies yeah. that... Uh, formidable kind of implies a little bit too much danger. Maybe dangerous is the appropriate level. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like maybe their idea of doing it is like speed training as many birds as possible so that they are outfitting as many people as possible just like just casting a very wide net so if like 80 percent of the tribe is using their birds whatever they find with those birds could be credited to them gotcha gotcha so then yeah. click it uh, to dangerous and what is important to understand is that because it is dangerous, it changes the amount of progress you gain every time you successfully make a move towards progressing in this vow. So because it's dangerous, every time you succeed, you're going to mark two progress uh, uh, boxes. So there's 10 just below that dangerous. Um, every time you okay. succeed, you're going to mark two progress. And what's going to happen is that you're going to eventually get to a point where maybe you have 7, 8, 10 progress marks and you are going to roll against that and if you succeed if you have a strong hit or a weak hit then you will complete this vow and and you will gain whatever experience is appropriate for that level of challenge so a dangerous okay. uh dangerous grants you a certain amount of experience that i don't immediately see but you get the point right okay yes that works so we have our short-term iron vow. We want to prove ourselves by finding an interesting hall, bring something back to benefit the tribe. What is a more epic, extreme, long-term vow your character could make? I want to. I want to. I want to get re, hmm. Do I want to get revenge on Wulan? Because they don't want to be a forecaster, but well, maybe. No, they don't. But maybe it was just shitty enough that they just want to get him back. Hmm. But that's not very epic. Yeah, it's not epic because I'm on. particularly... Uh, it's hard for me to like a character that's that just... just is going after revenge. <laughs> right, that's just being shitty. I mean, you know, so... th think about your character's situation and the situation of the tribe. I mean, an obvious vow for many people, I'm sure, is to you know, keep the, the, the tribe alive, help find a way out of the storm. Yes. You know, these are huge... Uh, 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 vows um, you know for your character being somebody who's like an outsider maybe maybe there's an injustice within the tribe that they want to rectify but no they it will take a lot of time and kind of you know swing people to it um, oh you have an idea yes yeah? yes <laughs> okay so um, bear with me there is a maybe a, another like brute in the tribe that symbolizes this like this like systematic wrong mm. um and the only way that they could probably defeat them is with force using this like hammer mechanic or being a unit yeah um but they insist on being this falcon person because it's cute and that's what they want to do um but maybe the big thing is maybe finding a way to take them down what they represent, yeah. it would be really problematic if they were someone that was in charge. Ooh. If they were in charge of the Ironmongers, and that would inherently piss off their definitely, grandmother. Definitely, definitely. That would be good. Okay, so, so, no, I want to go straight, less systematic wrong. And how it gets done, I think I'll leave that to the people of the future. Um, okay, so 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 reiterate one more maybe, time. What is this more long term vow? So it's it's to right a systematic wrong that is being perpetuated by the head of the Ironmongers. 
I see. So something the Ironmonger leader is doing is unjust. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Mayday Caleb says, maybe we want to free our little forecaster friend from their position somehow. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, uh, that is definitely a, a, a vow. Um, I don't think it's a particularly <laughs> epic vow uh, or extreme vow. Okay. I, I do think changing the mindset of the of the tribe makes a little more sense. I, I, I like this path you're going on of, of the uh, the leader who just has bad policy. Maybe it has to do with maybe it has to do with all old people like grandma have to become iron sworn, have to be put out into the storm. And you want to change that. You don't think you want your grandma to do that. I don't know. What do you think of that? No, but that works. Okay. Okay. Um, ooh. Ugh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So they, um, there's a bullshit rule about like after a certain age, you inevitably become iron sworn. Um, maybe they're involved. I'm just trying to think. Yeah. If they're involved with maybe carrying this out or helping like escort these people to the edge of the storm. And ooh, what if they just don't one time? Mm. But I'm thinking there's not really a whole lot of place you can go and people wouldn't find out that you didn't make it to the edge of the storm. Yeah. I'm starting to think maybe but, our, maybe we set it to like, extreme or epic or you know we set it to like extreme but we do leave it a little vague uh until it kind of hits us it's okay if we don't have something super concrete yet but i like the idea okay. of like basically the big vow is there's an injustice within the tribe that your character wants to rectify right i think that we can definitely mm -hmm. write down cool okay oops Ooh, injustice in the tribe Gonna okay. Figure out what that is yeah, that's a, that's all right. We we can figure it out later. Maybe this session. Maybe another session. That's fine. Uh, we have chosen our short term and long term vow. I think we have created our character. What's left is let's name this character, and then and then we'll take a short little break. So let's let's come up with a name. Do you want to roll for it, or do you have something in mind? Mm. Uh, no, I want to. roll Okay, for it. give me that D hundred roll. Random. And let's find out what it is. And perfect. A, That's a 22. Okay, interesting. Your name is Half. H-A-F. Half. Oh, that's so that's cute. Cool. Yeah. Half, because you're kind of oh, like half okay. and half. You're like half in one world and half in the other. I don't know. Yes, look at my little indecisive <laughs> baby. Yeah. Okay, so... Go ahead and change the, the character sheet to reflect the name. I think you can hit edit and change it. Name of my hawk as well. And it's going to be Char. Char. And I re I realized that. And then I remembered the Pokemon thing. So it's separate. Um, but how do I do that? Assets. <laughs> yeah, go back to assets and you would uh, change it that way. So, all right. So we have our name. We have our character. Let's take a quick break to kind of gather ourselves and then we'll actually attempt our first major move into our Iron Sworn game. We'll be right back, guys. For nearly a century, Delta Green has fought to keep the horrifying secrets of our world at bay. It's April 18, 2020. Six agents with troubled pasts must come together under the covert operation Perennial. While the world quarantines, we will be gathering intel. Can the agents complete the mission and make sense of Delta Green's sordid history? I am Agent Merritt. I know this is a bit of a formality, but is there any way I could get all of your uh, handles? You can call me Boomer. We'll be able to get in and out, upload, and no one will fucking know. We're about to access the most highly encrypted server in the world from a Starbucks? 
I am Agent Samuel. You a preacher or something? Or something, yeah. We've taken care of air travel with Agent Hyde. Say hi, Agent Hyde. Seth, what did you do? What did you take? There's no such thing as an unknown substance to me anymore. Agent Tuck is currently in quarantine with her wife. Why do we all each have a human if this is a low-risk operation? Warp, there was no one in there. I looked around. Agent Warp, you can still hear the boom, boom, boom. Someone's banging on the inside of that septic tank. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. Warp, it's okay. Or will the unnatural threats they face destroy them like the many agents that came before? Isn't that why you're here? For secrets. I know secrets. You're already dead. This is why we don't deviate from the fucking plan. Jesus, fuck! I am so stressed. I'm stressed, Sergio. Join the conspiracy October 30th as Mayday plays Delta Green. Available to listen on your favorite podcasting app. Visit MaydayRoleplay.com for more. Okay, so perhaps update that uh, that longer uh, uh, vow from Fix Injustice in the Tribe to gain a position of power to be able to fix what they see wrong about the tribe. Tribe issues. I also think you should change it to extreme because I'm not sure. I feel like this is within your grasp to a certain degree, you know? Okay. Just makes it a little bit easier to accomplish. And uh, when you make any kind of progress in this vow, you're only going to check off two ticks so it's like you'd be making a little x um and you'd have to basically do that twice in one box to fill that box so that's how much more difficult this extreme vow is okay but we're here we we, we've got our character now it's time to just decide you know uh, let's have you set the scene what what is your character doing to accomplish one of these two vows okay i um starting off they are cool okay so they are definitely an early riser half and they have started the day the way they always do which is running drills with char they are putting as of now they're putting all of their stock into this bird be the greatest bird there ever was they already believe that but we have to show the people that char gotcha so they're (laughs) running drills outside um just like flying them to either like check in on different people to like touch different things they're just running drills back and forth through the tribe you know what we also need to decide is what the what direction is the storm currently moving so roll me a d8 and let's figure that out uh yeah so just within roll 20 roll me a d8 and let's see what we get a one. So it is moving. If we look at the map, uh, one is northwest. Yes. So northwest. So it's currently moving in a northwesterly direction. I'm not going to move the actual icon that represents the storm. In two days' time, we will do that. We just know that the whole tribe is kind of moving northwest. And. Y- Audio just dipped again. Let me check in. I see Zakia. I see me. Uh, so I'm not sure why they're saying that. Uh, count to 10 real quick. One, yep, two, Yep, I see your levels. Three. You can stop. Okay. okay. Let's just see what happens. Uh, okay, oh. we're good now. Uh, cool. All right. So... Okay. Uh, we we know that the yeah. So we're we're moving northwest now. What's dangerous about that is you know the tribe would know is that the the mountains are to the north, and the more north we get, the harder that trek is going to be. Uh, you would know that to the east and to the west are the supposed shorelines of the Ironlands, and to the south is a lot more kind of grassy open land. And if we look closely on the map, uh, according to this hex, which is provided by a Reddit user named Threadis, T-H-R-E-D-I-T-H. Thank you, Threadis, for this very cool map. But if we look closely, it looks like kind of in the southern portion of the eye, there are 
uh, uh, forests. And to the north, looks like there's starting to be some hills and whatnot. So you're kind of in that middle ground between light forest and, and the hills. We, we know what your character's doing. What is the first kind of step that they want to take towards completing one of their vows? I think... And that would be based on the, the moves list, yeah? That would be based on the moves, but more importantly what you just logically think your character would do first to accomplish the first vow, which is to impress your grandmother, to kind of prove your your place in the tribe, to complete your rite of passage. How would your character go about doing that? I think they're going to flex by... Um, hmm. What are, what are we in? You know, you, you got to do something to impress the entire tribe. We mentioned bringing back a big hall. You could, if you want to, kind of go out and see if you can find anything that casters didn't notice or no one else has noticed. You know, there's there's over 20 miles of in diameter of, of eye. There's plenty of land to kind of explore. Yeah, I Jazz. think I want... Um... Okay, we know that the four casters tend to live in the north, south, east, and west quadrants of the eye. So perhaps you're heading to, like, northwest, maybe, in fact, in the direction of the storm. You want to get ahead and see what there is. All right. Yes. Yes. Also, um, we... Iron speak. Half is going to signal to Char that we're going northwest by the incredible um, in-game uh, sign language created by Iron speak, created by uh, Eli, so holding up three, our amazing sound Holding up sound three man. fingers is northwest? And um, go like this. Just west and up. very good to know. Northwest. Okay, cool. So yeah, you you signal to your hawk to do that. It it's trained enough yeah, that it knows and, and then and kind of flies off. off. So it sounds like you are going to. Well, you could undertake a journey when you travel across hazardous or unfamiliar lands, or I would say maybe gathering information is another possible uh, when you search an area, ask questions, conduct an investigation, or follow a track. So which one to you sounds like a good idea? I like gather information too. Okay. I think they're following a track. I don't know if your character Destiny. sheet, I, I don't remember if your, uh, if your companion gives you a plus one to this or not. But... Hmm. If you're going to gather information, you're going to roll with wits. But check real quick to make sure whether gather okay. information is one of the options for your hawk. Um, no, that would be undertake a journey, which is one of the options he suggested, yeah. huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, let's, can we do undertake a yeah, journey I think instead? That's... I want to give my boy. I, I, I think it's close enough. So what we're going to do is we have to kind of decide how difficult this journey is. And, and I don't think it should be super difficult. In fact, let's just say the undertaking a journey is kind of part of your vow with grandma. So we don't have to worry about creating a new vow. Let's just have okay. you, uh, let's see, uh, for each segment of your journey, you will roll plus wits. If you are setting off from a community with which you share a bond, which I'd say you do, you would add okay. plus one to your initiative roll. So you're going to roll okay. plus wits. You just have to click that, that wits button and... Uh, when it asks you for the modifier, you're going to add a plus one because of your bond with the tribe. And I think you'll add a plus one because of your friend Char. So that's, a, I think, a total of plus two to your wits. Okay. Um, cool. So. Okay. You just click wits? Yeah, you're going to click wits, and then it's going to ask you if you want to add a modifier to it and just add two to that. Okay. Here we go. First roll of the game. Let's see what it is. First actual move. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to navigate. Okay. Wait. Oh. Yes. Okay. Wits. Modifier plus two. Uh, okay. All right. A weak hit. So you rolled a seven total on your action die, uh, but you rolled a nine and a two. So, on a weak hit, you reach a waypoint and mark progress, but suffer minus one to supply. So, on your character sheet, you're going to bring supply from five to four. 
and you are going to mark progress, meaning you are able to add check marks to your uh, vow. So that means uh, because uh, it's a tr dangerous vow, you're going to add, I believe, two. Yeah, dangerous two progress. So two. Uh, it's a X and a T, so a total of four. Yeah. You're going to mark two progress. I'm Ooh. just saying that it's the full progress. You said just one little tick. So we have found a waypoint. A waypoint is generally... Sorry, I'm going to put in front of the camera. But a waypoint is usually like a unique place. We can roll for it, or if something seems obvious, you can just state it. But there are roles to determine kind of what we come on as a waypoint. Okay, let's keep it random. Let's see, we have our place oracles. Let's do a location descriptor. And I think that... I think you're going to have to roll... Let's see, coast, waters, location... Let's do this. Roll a d100. We'll determine what this location is. Fifty-eight. Village. Now, a location descriptor. We'll need another d100. Some kind of village. Yeah. <laughs> 53 is an abandoned village. <laughs> okay, so let's let's set the scene here. Um, you know, you come upon an abandoned village. I'd imagine it'd be pretty small, like probably like a little hamlet or something. You know, maybe back in the day, uh, it was just a, a, a house or two, maybe one little like longboat house or something. But what do you think is here? Uh, we can roll further if we wanted. We could roll on like a theme or something. Uh, or you could kind of decide what what's happening. Yeah, I think, okay, it starts with them just like pushing forward. Char is like... Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you, you definitely come upon an abandoned village. So it looks like it was once lived in. Um, we can, if we want, roll for a settlement trouble. Maybe there's something that defines why this place is abandoned. Go ahead and roll a d100. Let's see what we get. 16. A mysterious phenomenon. A mysterious phenomenon. What, what were you going to say? We, we we could we could do it. I mean, unless some if nothing immediately comes to mind, we could we could try to define what that is. A mysterious phenomenon. Okay, okay. So here he, we can either let's make an oracle roll. So what happens is uh, when we come to these kinds of crossroads, we're not really sure whether it is definitively something or not. We can make an oracle roll. So what you would do is go to the oracle tab in the character uh, sheets, and then. Under, ba, 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 go all the way down. If you scroll all the way down, there is the option to ask the oracle. Click ask the oracle. All right. So what do you think is the likelihood that this mysterious phenomenon, well, I realize what I'm saying is probably useless. You have kind of already made that decision. I suppose there is no need for this. If you want, you can make a roll to determine whether you think it's very likely that that's what is happening or if it's something else. Or we can just go with your idea. Someone, Sound Kid Eli suggests get some black iron. I mean, that that is an, an unnatural, strange phenomenon. Maybe the people... Maybe this place is abandoned in the sense that there's no one alive, but there are people here that are, like, encased in black iron. Continue. So, uh, all right. So, you find a place that you said is either covered in char, but not burned, or you find black iron. Which one do you feel oh. is the better idea? I like, I like, uh... Eli's suggestion, I want to find some black iron. I think it makes sense, too, because you are trying to prove yourself. Coming across black iron is certainly a big deal. But the question is, is it your black iron? Does it belong to you? And if it doesn't belong to you, can you figure it out? Oh, I don't think... 
Isn't it true that like if if the black ironed person is of the bloodline of the person that finds them or something, don't they have a say? They have a say in it. But there's no way to know. Well, we we did we did discuss maybe uh, people have placards or, or like the iron has been etched to determine something. You could make a gather information roll to try to find out more. Yeah, I think let's do that. Gather information roll to find out if this black iron is something I can make a call on. If they're related okay, to me. Let me pull up gather information. So you're going to roll plus wits. So go to your uh, okay. summary again. You're going to roll plus wits. And I don't think you have any uh, bonuses to this. Um, nope. So we'll just, f we'll just a straight plus wits. Okay, cool. And let me change to the rolls. Another weak hit. A weak hit. Okay, that's better than a bad hit. Better than a weak hit. Or a miss, I mean. Let me move this up a little bit. There we go. All right. On a... Weak hit. The information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Envision what you discover. And you can ask the Oracle if unsure, but you will take plus mo one momentum. So your momentum will move up from whatever it currently is. Might be plus three. Cool. Yeah, momentum's at plus three All right, now. so it becomes plus, plus okay. four. No, I mean, with the plus one, it's at gotcha. plus three. So on a weak hit, the information complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. Envision what you discover. Complicates your quest or introduces a new danger. So a complication is something like this belongs someone, this belongs, this black iron belongs to someone that is hard to, to reach or maybe isn't with the tribe anymore or um, something else. Or uh, it introduces a new danger, like maybe there's something wrong with this black iron. Maybe maybe it's been torn apart already. Maybe someone's already taken a chunk out of this person. That would be really bad. Okay, yeah, I like I like the idea of either something being wrong with the black iron, which is not something that we've seen before, or um, that this has already been harvested from recently, maybe by someone else. And just hasn't been reported or talked about at all. Interesting. Okay. So then let's do this. Let me have you... I think we should ask... Let's see. First of all, let's see. The gather information on a weak hit, you don't add progress. So that hasn't changed anything. But I feel like this kind of calls for an ask the oracle like... Does it seem likely that someone has taken chunks off of this person? Uh, the yeah. the way we do this is, let me pull up the oracle, which I think is towards the back. Where are we? Here we go. So if it is likely, or do we want to make it 50-50? Is it likely that someone has broken this or is it 50-50? Um, let's do 50, 50 Okay, so if you roll a 51 or greater on a D100, then it is likely that it happened. that Or it did, in fact, happen. So the answer is yes, if you roll 51 or greater on a D100. Yep. Okay, so that's a 24, okay. which means it's... So that, that means that that's not the case. Someone did not just come here and steal a chunk off. However, we kind of have established that something has happened to this black iron... Um, uh, maybe it's animal marks. Maybe some kind of animal has been tearing this thing apart. Maybe it almost looks like something has been eating the iron. Yeah. Well, I think it, that depends on like, maybe it's a, it's a sign. Mm. Okay. So maybe it's a sign of either like acid rain is coming mm. up, uh, a terrible animal. Or um, maybe something spookier within the storm is like ripping at this black iron. Okay. One of those three. Okay. Either way, either way, let's say that you can tell who it belongs to because I think it's 
it's worth like like you you can still tell who it might belong to. Let's decide. Um, is it someone we know or is it someone we don't know? Uh, what do you think the odds are of that? We'll ask the oracle. Fifty fifty. I think unlikely. Likely. I think it's likely that it's someone we know. Okay. Eli suggested that it's the iron of one of the leaders. Or, the, yeah, that the Black Iron belongs to All the right, leader. so let's decide, does it belong to one of the leaders? You feel like, yeah, maybe likely it is, so you're going to roll a d100, and if you roll higher than 26, the answer is yes. Yes. Okay. That's a 40. So you, like, get down, and you're looking at the iron, and you see etched into it the, the symbol of one of the leaders. Who, who, who do you think it should be? You want to roll a d3 and find out? Uh, yes, All right, so do, one cause... one is the Ironmongers, two is the Historians, three is the Cartographers. Okay, cool. I will roll... Oh, boy. Um, there we go. We'll ignore a four if you roll a d4. Okay, so the Cartographers. Three. So someone from the Cartographers, uh, one of the leaders, it belongs to them. Oh. He's kind of... I think we decided he's kind of a advisory person, but he's not necessarily okay. the leader. Um, okay. The master. Yes. We find the, uh, the black iron that belongs to one of the leaders. We'll say it's a cartographer. Um, very cool. Uh, so now we, so let's say half kind of realizes this. He realizes this is the perfect opportunity to impress. It's going to be hard to move this iron by yourself. What's the logical next step? And remember that, let's see, let, um, go back to your summary, because I think we've only made two progress. I think finding this black iron is worthy of another two progress. Love that. So you okay. so you should have four progress total now on this vow. Yes. So now the heart. Uh, I, go ahead. Oh no! I was gonna say I think the even if they are like strong enough to pick up this person and walk. You want to find somebody to help you. I would imagine though you want to be a little bit careful because someone might steal the glory. You know what I mean? You you want to make this as much about yourself as possible in 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 this. So yeah. you could. You, hmm. Bring some. Well, I am the muscle, huh? No, yeah. Let's try and carry this person mm -hmm. in. Because even if it's a dumb idea, that'll be interesting. Bring them in. Let's you pick up this person. to kind of just no break a piece off. That's a real thing. Unless it seems, seems disrespectful. Worse. Okay. Mm -hmm. How smart is my, my lad? Uh, he's got a one in wits. <laughs> They have a one in wits, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's. Ooh. Oh, that's really disrespectful. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's try to break off a piece, probably a hand, especially if there's some sort of like jewelry yeah. or tattoo or something important. Um, and bring that in. Okay, so let's see. How do we want to handle this? Um, when you have initiative and attack in close quarters, you can roll plus oh, can iron. I when just, you have initiative can I just and swing? attack at range, <laughs> this is a good time. There, there's hammer. a combat move called strike, which makes oh, yes. sense. But a part of me feels like, in a way, this is a... This is kind of dangerous because, yeah, because like, what chisel? if somebody gets upset about the fact that you broke a piece of their relative off or something like that? I, I, it's almost like a a face danger or a secure an advantage. That's a, an adventure move. Secure an advantage. When you assess a yes. situation, make preparations or attempt to gain leverage. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think that does. And I get a plus one for trying to secure an advantage. Using your mace too, right? Yes. Nice. Yeah, so it's it's perfectly applicable. So here's the thing. You can roll with speed or ag agility, also known as edge, or heart or iron. Okay. So which which of these would you like to roll? I want to roll with the That iron. makes sense. Aggressive action, forceful defense, strength or endurance. So go ahead and roll iron and you'll add 
whatever bonus modifiers you get normally. Okay, cool. We got a plus one, which uh, means... Let me go to the rolls. Opportunity. Uh, that, that, that seems like a concession, but what does that mean? What do you mean? Sit, uh... Oh, so, interesting. This is a strong hit, right? You rolled a seven on okay. your score, and you have doubles of the challenge die. You have two threes. So what this means is, is that something good, something very good is going to happen. So it definitely works. Let's, let's, uh, on a strong hit, you gain advantage, which is more to do with um, combat and stuff. But you take control. You can make another move now and add plus one to that move, whatever you decide to do. Uh, or and you take plus two momentum, so you can add plus two to your momentum. Becomes four now. Um, plus two is five. Plus awesome. five. Awesome. And make another move now. Um, whatever you end up, basically, whatever your next move is, you'll add plus one to that. So just keep that in mind. But okay. yeah, I would imagine it's something like you break the hand off, but it's like um. Maybe there's something on the hand that very clearly, that maybe the person that you eventually hand this over to will be like, oh, that's definitely that person. Yeah, I think maybe it's some sort of, uh, like, brace or, like, I want, like, a really pretty piece of jewelry that starts as, a, as like, a bracelet and goes up and turns into a ring. And it's like, it, like this is a lot of iron to put on one person's hand. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you can't mistake it for anything else. All right, awesome. So you have gotten this hunk of iron. It's time to what? What do you think is the, the best next move? Okay, so we've gone out. We've got a cool thing. The next best thing is to probably get clout. Like, we need to show this to somebody important and, like, like mark where they're going. I mean, I feel like they have enough basic skills to be able to find where they went right true i think it would be pretty easy to return from whence you came um let's let's say that you you don't have to undertake a journey but you do need to return to the village and what find the person that it belongs to yeah i want to go right to the cartographers um and explain what I've been doing and that I have your, your daddy's hand. And we have established that uh, cartographers are the ones that carry the boat. They, they like, they have like their tent is, is the, the boat that can be flipped over at any time. Right. So you yes. head over to them as they're kind of, you know, marching <laughs> with it. I think you need to make a relationship move in the most, the, the one that makes the most sense is a compel move. When you attempt to persuade someone to do something and perhaps what you're persuading them to do is to recognize that you've done something for the tribe, you've done something to help them, right? Does that make sense? Okay, yes. so if you're going to charm, pacify, barter, or convince, you're going to roll plus heart. If you threaten or incite, you'll roll iron. If you lie or swindle, you'll roll shadow. I think heart is the one that makes the most sense, right? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I, yeah, I don't want to like pack in a lie so I get that extra plus one. <laughs> But uh, you do get yeah. a, you do get a plus one nuts. because of your last success. Okay. Uh, so just paint the picture for me. What, what do you do when you walk in? Like, how do you present this to the leader? Okay, uh, I think after they've been hyping themselves up that entire walk back, um, it's like way longer strides than there should be. <laughs> like people that are professionally like listening to the ground to see if there's any problem are thrown off by half stomping his way into camp or stomping their way into camp for the first time they go to the moving boat of the cartographers i imagine there's some sort of isolated place where like the leaders go mm. and they like whoosh like fly open the, the double flaps of the tent and conveniently as the wind is blowing and present themselves and then they lose all confidence and just stand there for a moment <laughs> uh, yeah as all then, the <laughs> eyes suddenly switch to them yeah and um, keep walking and just take the hand out of their satchel and put it on. What's more awkward? Yeah, they just put it in front of the person they think it belongs to. Hmm. 
Awesome. So before you make that compel roll, let's figure out who this person is. Let's make the decision who the leader of the cartographers is. Go ahead and roll the D100. Okay. Uh, three. Is a my is AI. A 18. My is the leader of the cartographers. And let's roll another D100 to determine their descriptor, what they're like. Okay. One, they are stoic. One. So the cartographer leader is this super stoic person, my. My could be feminine or masculine, you know. I think it leans more towards maybe feminine. But anyway, Mai is sitting there, no expression on their face. Now, you you rolled double threes in that last roll, which gave you the plus one. So they're certainly going to be impressed, but okay. let's see what happens with that compel roll when you roll uh, plus your heart. Heart. Heart plus one. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh wow! That's cool. Okay. Wow. Okay, half. That's so. Fair. Even though you rolled really well, a nine, you rolled yeah. double tens on the challenge die. This is a complication. This is a critical failure. <laughs> yeah. It is. So okay. What is realistic? I, I think we had talked a little bit earlier about like maybe it's a little taboo. To, yeah, that's really offensive. Yeah, so maybe you misread the situation and just thought, ah, oh, they're just going to be happy that I broke something off one of their ancestors. <laughs> I, I imagine, like, they stand up, like, stoically from their table and their eyes are just wide. And they say something like, you know, uh, uh, oh, do you think that they would be, I, I think they might be angry enough to maybe want to start something with you. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, if because Half doesn't have a rank yet. If they wanted to do something like, I'm thinking in like like period dramas when someone messes up, they get just slapped. Like they have, they could do that if they wanted to. Um, it's definitely if they wanted to, whatever pressing charges is, they would. I think it's they realistic might. that they might stand up and they might smack you and say something like, I'm challenging you to a duel or something like that. And I think that's a good place to end our session for the evening. That's so scary. Oh yeah. my gosh. We, you were rolling okay. so well until that last one. <laughs> it was a perfect failure. Incredible. Incredible. I'm proud of them. So we're ending our game. I think the next thing we should do, or the final thing we should do, is roll a d6. I'm going to ask you, Zakia, to roll a d6. And that will determine okay. who the next player is for next session. One is Amanda, Ooh. two is Caleb, four is Aaron, five is Allegra, six is Eli. That's a four. That's a four. That means Aaron will be the next person to take on the role of half the, the hawk uh, uh, wielding, <laughs> hammer wielding person who feels like they're stuck in the middle uh, amazing, amazing first session, guys. We apologize for any of our uh, our hiccups. Our our hiccups. We're we're trying to fix them. We're going to get through them eventually. But I want to thank you, Zakia, for uh, being the first victim today. Would you? Do you have anything you want to plug? Anything you want to mention before we go no. off? Um, no, that not that I can think of. I mean, uh, you have a just things you have a coffee that I think you did some art for. Oh. I do, I do have a Kofi. Okay, yeah. If you wanna, I mean, if you wanna donate, if you wanna follow, you totally can. Um, that's, I think it's. Let me try to find. Okay, yeah, it's it's at Zach the Drac. The same thing. All my other handles are. Uh, but other than that, it, just look at what Mayday's doing, and everyone's doing a good job. That's it. Uh, special thanks to Aaron who produced the beautiful score that plays at the top and middle and bottom of our show. Uh, guys, if you if you are having fun, if you like what we're doing, definitely stay tuned for tomorrow. Uh, for a premiere of a brand new show called Heroes You Should Know with Allegra and, Cable, uh, and Caleb. Yes. They are going to discuss uh, real world people, heroes that actually existed in our world, and they're going to stat them like D&D. &D. So it should be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. We will see you next time on the Eye of the Storm. Thank you guys. Until next time. Take it easy. Bye.